In today's video, we tenuously link together the dinosaurs, Nazi history, and the Michelin Man. Let's discuss it. One the trucker's eye! <laughs> This is Sutton Bank in the North York Moors National Park in England. It is a high point in the Hambleton Hills. The view from the top of the bank was once described as England's finest view. Those were the words of celebrated author and vet James Herriot. At the top of Sutton Bank there is an airfield which is home to Yorkshire Gliding Club. Uh, what do you reckon? All the uh, thermals and all that all right up there, Andy? Oh, no, no. It's uh, one of the best days of the year. Yeah, that's exactly what well, I thought. <laughs> get up as high as you can, do I? <laughs> the airfield was used in the 1930s to train German pilots. As well as the gliding club, these days Sutton Bank is a popular visitor attraction, whether that be families, runners, mountain bikers or climbers. There's also a cafe at the top of the bank. The rock found on Sutton Bank dates back to the Jurassic period, meaning this bank is as old as the dinosaurs. Sutton Bank also carries one of Britain's main trunk roads over the top, the A170. This goes from Thirsk to Scarborough. As the A170 ascends Sutton Bank, some of the gradients are as much as 25%. That means for every 4 metres you travel, it will ascend by 1 metre. This means that this short, sharp climb is a challenge for nearly all vehicles. This section of the A170 is so challenging that in 2016, the Tour de Yorkshire cycle race took the A170 across Sutton Bank. I don't know about you, but I would find it hard riding down the hill, never mind up it. That's a steep climb, mate. There is, however, one vehicle that is completely banned from transiting Sutton Bank. Police have even been known to seize caravans from drivers who insist on going over Sutton Bank. Caravans are highly likely to get stuck going up Sutton Bank. This is to do with the drive axle configuration on most family cars. Two wheel front axle drive cars are the most common cars on our roads today. And the problem being Sutton Bank is so steep in parts that the weight of the caravan on the back of the car plus the incline means that the front axle has virtually no grip on most family cars. But whilst caravans are prohibited from travelling up Sutton Bank, HGVs are not. And this is causing a very, very regular problem. Radio York Travel, there's a wagon stuck on Sutton Bank. The road is blocked in both directions and police are turning everybody around. That's the A170 between Thirsk and Helmsley, blocked at the moment. The amount of HGVs getting stuck on the ascent is running at around one per week. So why is it happening? As with everything else, driver error is always a factor. In the video you are currently watching on the screen, I am heading directly towards Sutton Bank in an HGV. And towards the end of this video, we will see just how I get on. The diversion route for a HGV around Sutton Bank is around 20 miles extra on the total distance. If I need to use Sutton Bank myself, I will always ask myself these three questions. The first question always has to be, is will the load make it up the hill? On this occasion, I have an empty trailer but sometimes four, six or maybe eight heavy pallets can always help as they sit on the headboard of the trailer which is directly above the drive axle of all trucks. This weight above the drive axle will help with traction. At the beginning of this section of the A170 you'll notice a sign and that sign tells you that it is unsuitable for heavy loads. 
A heavy load will have a similar kind of effect on the truck as a caravan does on a car. The steepness of the gradient, along with the weight of the goods, will act like a seesaw effect. This means that the drive axle will have a lot less traction. As I said earlier, shortly we will see my recent trip up Sutton Bank. I'll explain why the hairpin bend and the bend near the top of the bank are the most treacherous pieces of the road. The second important piece of the criteria I use for making my decision as to whether to travel up Sutton Bank is tyres. Worn out tyres are no good for this climb. I'm lucky that I have a really good set of tyres and that's where the Michelin Man comes in from the beginning of the video. Even if your trailer is empty, you could still have problems with worn tyres. The third and final thing I ask myself is about the weather. If it has been raining or whether it is likely to rain as I make my way to the start of the hill. No matter whether my trailer is empty or how good the tyres are on the truck, if it is wet or looking like it is going to rain, I will not head up this route. Luckily, using computer graphics, we can turn the rain off, just like this. HGV is getting stuck on the climb once or twice a year might be a more acceptable figure. HGV is getting stuck once a week really isn't, and it won't be long before HGVs are probably banned from this route. So I would urge all of my colleagues to have a little bit of common sense while they plan their route. But this isn't all about HGV drivers. The authorities also need to take their fair share of the blame as to why so many trucks get stuck. I was amazed to find out that around September every single year they have an assessment of this stretch of road. Loss of traction seems to be the integral factor into why so many trucks get stuck. So why is there not a high grip surface on this road? I dare say expense will be the excuse used, but shutting the road is at what cost to the economy? Using Google Maps we can look at the most treacherous part of the climb. This is the left hand hairpin bend. And as you look on the left you can see where the road is going to and coming from. On any truck's ascent, any trailer will cut across the corner. This is the steepest part of the gradient on this bend. Around the outside the gradient is far less and that is the route I tend to take, even though there are double white lines there. This is the bend where you see most HGVs stuck. A really easy solution would be to give priority to the oncoming traffic coming up the hill. Drivers descending can easily see drivers coming towards them even around the bend. There are many other little things that could be added onto this route to improve everybody's journey and to reduce the number of stuck trucks. There are other things that could be improved. That's the third time I've showed you that video of me coming round the roundabout at the beginning of the A170. Did you read the whole of the sign? Can you tell me what it said? Remember, this camera is fixed and only looking in one direction. A driver will be looking at a trailer coming behind him, cars from the side, pedestrians and also trying to read that signage. Whilst trying to watch everything else that is going on, you are also making sure you are on the right route. You also need to take the exit and read this sign all at the same time. And as you can see in this still picture, it says unsuitable for heavy loads. Rather than being unsuitable for this route, maybe heavy loads do actually need to be prohibited from this route. Maybe making this route a 26 tonne gross vehicle weight limit or such like would be the way to go. This would still allow rigids and empty arctics to use this route. If you happen to be unfortunate and do get stuck behind a truck that loses traction on this hill, the best thing to do is stay back. The only way that this truck will move is through gravity and gravity alone. In other words, they'll come down backwards. You might wonder why you see trucks blocking the whole of the road. Basically what happens is they have to reverse and they go wrong when they're making a blindside reverse. A blindside reverse is backing ground to your left hand side when all you can see in your left hand mirror instead of where you're going on the road is the side of your trailer. With a normal reverse if you do go wrong you can just pull forward and try again. When you've already lost traction 
and are using gravity to reverse back down the hill, you have no margin for error. One mistake and you have no traction to move forward. So now it's time for us all to go on a ride in an HGV up Sutton Bank. So this is the start of the climb. Earlier on in the video, which I haven't included in this version, I was behind an old dilapidated van. Luckily he turned off. Had he have continued on the same route as myself, then I would have left a massive space between myself and his van. That way I would have time to keep my wheels turning to adjust my speed and pass him safely without stopping my truck. Just ahead in the distance, you'll see the hairpin bend, which takes us on a 180 degree turn. It's important to keep an eye on the vehicles coming down on your left hand side. You do not want to meet them as you make the 180 degree turn. Whilst I'm not supposed to breach the solid white lines, this is one occasion where I allow myself to do it. This is because the gradient around the outside of the bend is a lot less than that on the inside. Just before the previous bend, I selected manual gearbox. This is so that the truck is not making the decisions to change the gears up. I don't want any kind of wheel spin whatsoever. But it's at this point I'm confident enough to put the gearbox back into automatic mode. Once you've made it this far, you are pretty much home and hosed. Just one more right hand bend to go, and then you'll see the gliding centre and the public car park on the left hand side. It's at this point that the road starts to become a little bit foggy, and off we go towards Pocklington. A little bit of common sense could go a long way into sorting this problem out, both from HGV drivers and authorities who could do a few little simple things to improve this route. Let me know what you think in the comments, I do hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you very much once again for watching, if you have subscribed thank you once again, if you haven't please consider doing so and I'll see you next time. On the truck as I! <laughs>